Welcome to another episode of Entre Filmmaker. I'm your host Shmuley Hoffman. Production equipment is an integral part of what we do, right? You know, many of us working in the film and media industry have to travel for work not just domestically, but also internationally. I don't want to rely just on rental equipment at my, you know, new destination or location. Have you ever tried to get a Ronin M gimbal in Namibia? Now imagine the following scenario. You pack up your gear worth let's say $25,000. You get into the airplane and travel let's say to Israel right for a job. You have your gig over there, live lavishly in big and expensive hotels, eat lobster all day on the beach. Okay I admit not me, I eat only kosher. Then it's time to head back home and you board the airplane. On your way back through customs the officer pulls you over because you have tons of pelican cases, bags and luggage that has flagged our officer for checking you out with your luggage and items for customs. In a worst case scenario, you might have to pay up to $7,500 in taxes and penalty fees and customs and so on. In this episode, I'll walk you through step by step how you can travel internationally without ever being punished and penalized by customs if you bring your own gear no matter how much it's worth. Bumper. Shall we quickly interrupt them? Yeah. Okay, every week aspiring filmmakers ask me how I got started as an immigrant building my own commercial film production company in such a short period of time. I found basically a way to answer all of you at once in detail. I basically put together a complete blueprint, a practical plan of action for how to start your own production company. Do you want a production company? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> Without going into debt or making stupid beginner mistakes. Go to startmyfilmcompany.com and sign up. I walk you through step by step how to make this the most exciting, successful and profitable journey of your life. To create your own money making film and video production company on a shoestring budget. Visit startmyfilmcompany.com and I see you over there. Shall we go on with the show? Yeah. Okay, and back to the show. Now, when you travel to a different country, the maximum duty free allowance to carry between, let's say, the US and most foreign countries is approximately $800. But most of our stuff is more valuable than that, right? Just carry a laptop with you and it might exceed already the allowance easily because most of us don't schlep a cheap PC laptop around. So here's our first joke. Oh! <laughs> Since you probably didn't bring your sales receipts to prove that this is your equipment, they might assume that you purchased the equipment abroad. In this case, you would be required to pay taxes like sales tax and customs and penalty fees. It can go as high as 25% of the total value of your equipment. In our scenario, that can amount to a whooping $7,500. Not only do you have to pay the penalties and taxes, but since you are stuck in customs and have to explain your whole mess to the officer, it is very likely that you miss your flight and now you have to purchase another return flight ticket. How about that? In essence, it's a big pain in the butt that you want to avoid by getting and carrying a carnet. So what really is a carnet? A French drink? A word for making love in French? A French bread? None of the above. A carnet is a special travel document that lists all of your equipment items. It allows you to travel between 85 registered countries. The procedure of getting a carnet can be a bit challenging at first, but once you set it up right, you are up and rolling. And it is much easier than being at the constant danger of paying thousands of dollars when you go on a job to a foreign country. My English is like so chewing gummy. Here is my step-by-step -step guide to get your carnet. Step one, you have two options to get a carnet. You either sign up to the website or by phone. If you do it by phone, you need to call 1-800-282-2900. 
Those are real people sitting in offices here in the US and their service is unbelievable. In one situation, their office helped me when I urgently needed to fly to Israel and I received it next day in the morning via FedEx. The second option that you have is going to atacarnet.com. Create over there an account and fill out the forms, including listing all of your equipment, the price, the weight, you know, country of origin and so on for each item. Now, here's the procedure and you need to do and follow this every single time diligent, diligently. When arriving at your home airport, before you actually check in with the airline, you have to go to the customs office at the airport. Make sure before you arrive at the airport that you know the opening hours beforehand of the customs office. You don't want to run into a situation where, for example, your flight is, let's say 5.30 in the morning and the customs office opens at 7 a.m. Then you have to hand over the carnet to the customs officer and he will fill out the carnet right here in this section and sign and stamp it. Make sure that he's really doing this. You might need to show him your items, meaning he looks at the list and the items that you have in your luggage and kind of cross checks them. Second, once you land in the foreign country of your destination and you know went through passport control and picked up your luggage from the luggage belt, you need to go immediately to the customs office of the foreign country. You have to show them again your carnet and have the carnet being stamped and signed here on this page. Once you finished your trip, you did all your work, everything went successfully, you will be going back to the airport and over there you have to visit the customs office again before you board the flight back home and before you actually check in. Then they will fill out the form here and will rip out a page from the back in order to have it for their own records. Fourth. Once you arrive back at your home airport, you went through the pass control and picked up your luggage, you will need to visit the customs office one more time and have it signed and stamped right here. Ooh. Now what are you doing when the customs office is open after your flight is departing? You have to find customs office in the city you are residing and get the necessary stamps there. A carnet is valid for only one year and costs approximately $400. Now, if you don't have your carnet handy or let's say you lose it, always have somewhere your purchase receipts of your gear ready for any emergency situation. I have all my receipts in a folder in my Gmail account and additionally in Evernote as a backup. The chance that they let you go is then a very high or has a very high probability. Now you might ask, why not do you just bring... <laughs> Sounds like Yoda. <laughs> the text I come up with is just plain awesome. Now you might just ask, why don't you just bring purchase receipts with you in the first place instead of getting a carnet that cost you a freaking $400? The answer is as usually here simple. You might be at the mercy of the officer whether he lets you go or not. And one last tip. When you add the gear to your carnet, always, always add your entire gear collection, meaning all of your equipment, even equipment that you might plan to purchase in the near future. The reason is simple. You always can subtract your gear. However, adding a new piece of equipment and even if it's just a pencil, you have to apply for a brand new carnet, meaning another $400. There you have it. My guide to travel with your equipment internationally. Listen, if you want to know how to travel the world with a complete studio packed up in only two suitcases, camera, lenses, audio gear, crane, dolly, steadicam, light, stands and so on, all in two suitcases, then click on the link below for that very episode. How to fly a film studio in a suitcase. This is Entre Filmmaker, I'm Shmuley Hoffman and I'll see you in my next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye. Did I do well?